next presentation will be from Elise Shadler. She's a community outreach professional with the University of Vermont Extension and with the uh, Vermont Urban and Community Forestry Program, providing technical urban forestry assistance to communities and coordinating educational programming, such as the Stewardship of Urban Landscape, or SOL. She received her MS in Natural Resources at UVM, studying urban forestry and voluntary carbon markets. And prior to moving to Vermont, she spent a year as an AmeriCorps Nas National Cil Civilian Community Corps member on the West Coast and directed a community-based tree planting program in Camden, New Jersey with the New Jersey Tree Foundation. And uh, she'll be talking to us today about uh, tree inventories and canopy assessments. Um, so my, my co-presenter, uh, Danielle, couldn't be here because her daughter's uh, Valley recitals tonight. So, um, I'm going solo on this, and I think we're going to talk a little bit briefly about um, how we are using um, tree inventory data to help communities better manage their public tree resource. Um, so I work for the Vermont Urban Community Forestry Program, and uh, we're a collaborative effort between uh, the Department of Forest Park, Forest and Recreation and UVM Extension. And obviously, we know that even in a rural state like Vermont, um, urban forests are a big deal. Um, so while only about two percent of the land mass of Vermont is designated as urban, um, about thirty-eight percent of our state population, or about two hundred thirty-two thousand people, live in those in these urban areas. So the trees that are placed in those, planted and managed in those spaces are um, doing, working extra hard to provide benefits um, such as $25 million per year, um, or $800,000 per year in carbon sequestration, $25 million in carbon storage, and um, $6.6 a year, million a year in air pollution removal, and then there's a whole slew of aesthetic and um, social environmental uh, benefits that are also associated with those trees. Um, but we also know that in Vermont, um, there is limited capacity at the municipal level to be managing these trees. So, um, you know, we have uh, municipalities with small staff. We only have three cities in Vermont that have a trained arborist on staff. So, um, limited technical capacity and ability to manage these trees. Um, a lot of the management that's happening at a local level is really reactionary. So, when a tree falls or a, a resident calls and complains, that's when they come out and burn the trees or remove the trees. Um, we also know that a lot of the um, advocacy groups that are stewarding these trees in urban areas um, are uh, kind of populated with older volunteers and are uh, also lack the uh, technical capacity to do that management of the trees. Um, an example of this is Essex Junction, which is in Chittenden County, just a couple miles east of here, um, about five square miles and about 9,000 people. Um, three years ago, Essex Junction was an example of a town that really they had no base inventory, they had no idea what they had on the ground, they had no information about the urban forest diversity, um, they had no technical capacity with staff, they had no tree policy, for, um, protection policies, and no advocacy group at all. And that's that's a common um, case that we're running into in the state. And while my program um, has existed for the last two decades, um, the kinds of work that we have been doing for the most part was about outreach and education. So uh, we run a number of citizen volunteer training opportunities. The Forest Pest Forest Protector Training <coughs> is um, one example, and the other is the Stewardship of the Urban Landscape Training. So we provide a lot of technical uh, workshops and um, kind of volunteer appreciation events. Um, random, randomly we'll be doing tree plantings with communities. We offer a small grants program. Um, you know, we put out guides and publications, but we really weren't feeling uh, that the impact that we were really um, providing services that were leading to uh, measurable results on the ground. So a couple of years ago, we decided to make a strategic program shift and um, try to be really a lot more strategic in helping specific communities that had um, that were on the cusp of having that capacity or that really had um, the momentum to to want to be able to develop their tree programs. So um, we wrote that up and uh, proposed it to the Forest Service and. They bought in and they awarded us a multi-year grant to work with 20 um, priority communities in Vermont to uh, work on three specific things. One, getting a tree inventory of the public trees um, on the books, writing a management plan with uh, really attainable, actionable um, measures, and then uh, going into those towns and training their municipal staff, which is mostly public works employees, roads crews that are doing that tree work, training them to have the technical skills to do pruning, removal, etc. 
Um, the first thing we did was actually work with a student in Darla's, he left, but Darla's GIS class to help us kind of wrap our heads around this idea of uh, what are those 20 communities. And we based that off of impervious surface, um, population density, existing tree canopy cover, and then kind of our institutional awareness about the capacity in those local, in those towns and those um, regions. And we didn't include those three towns that already have an arborist on staff, including Burlington. Um, I'm sorry, you did or didn't? We did not. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, and, and one of the big things was, uh, for us, has really been getting the communities to buy in. So those communities that we reach out to, um, to work with on this initiative, um, they are really buying in. They sign an MOU with us, and they're really involved in every decision along the way. Um, we really want to create something that's sustained after we finish this, um, this project. So uh, we worked with the Agency of Natural Resources GIS team last year um, to essentially create our own urban and community forestry Vermont specific inventory system. We invested in six iPad Airs and we are using an application developed by Esri that is, um, can be used on any smart device and um, it's really user friendly and we have done uh, 10 inventories now with uh, communities. Um, we use, some communities have their own volunteers that they want um, to be engaged. We have interns, um, most of them from UVM, and then we also have, have have a strong partnership with the Lands Program, the Land Stewardship Program at UVM. So um, both their summer um, interns, and then this fall they had their first field semester. So they've been really helpful in collecting that data. Um, after the data is collected, we put together a, a really comprehensive inventory report. So that includes information about forest diversity, you know, what's, what's the composition, um, what do we find on the ground. These are all public trees. We're talking about trees within the right of way. We're not doing private trees. Um, and then we also look at um, age structures. So by, by looking at the size of the trees, what can, what can we assume about the age structure of those trees? And then uh, we take data on conditions. So what are, what's the health of the urban forest? Um, we also take data on potential tree planting locations within the right of way. So um, that helps to put together kind of some ideas about where future potential plantings will be. Um, we run all of the data through iTree, which is forest service software that's free. Um, iTree Streets turns out these lovely um, economic values of the ecosystem services of the street trees, which is a great public outreach tool. Um, we also do an iTree canopy assessment of the area to kind of look at the whole canopy cover for um, that town. And um, then we make management recommendations in those inventory reports. And we put together a bunch of GIS maps as well. Um, all the data, since we're working with ANR, um, has been added to ANR Atlas as a, a layer. So there's an urban tree layer on ANR's um, Atlas tool. So anybody can go and look at all this data. And that's one of the reasons we are focusing on public trees, because it is publicly accessible data. Um, phase two of this project is actually going to be um, developing some kind of web interface for those specific towns so that they can get in and manage. So if they remove the trees that are dead, they can take them out of the inventory system. Um, and what we're really seeing, and this has been the last two years we're focusing on this, more strategic um, approach, and we're really seeing communities that are, um, you know, if, if they haven't had an advocacy group, their conservation commission is refocusing on more urban public trees. Um, we're seeing tree, tree groups forming, we're seeing policies being drafted, we're seeing um, budgets that hadn't ever existed before for tree management really starting to pop up. So um, it's really working well for us and you know, looking back at Essex Junction, um, as of this year, they now have a, a tree committee, they have a, a past tree policy, um, they celebrated their first Arbor Day this year, they, uh, we, we, they have a draft of a management plan, they um, brought in, we brought in um, a trained arborist to train their public works crew on tree care. And totally unsolicited, the select board um, gave them a budget of $10,000 for this year. Yeah. So that was basically, they, they demonstrated, they showed what they had, um, they identified needs, and they um, really showed the dedication and commitment of that group. Um, so that's where they are now, which is, which is kind of our poster child story, and we're hoping the other towns we work with will have similar stories. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Right. Sure. Any questions? Yeah. 
I have a question um, just about, uh, have you noticed different challenges when you work with a community like Essex Junction that has a well-defined center, mm -hmm. very clear urban trees, and then you go to maybe Richburg or other areas where you're focused more rural? Um, yeah. how, uh, how do you address this? I battle with these a lot. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how are you engaging people? Well, in each of the towns we work with, um, you know, we really say we want this to be useful data for you. So what do you what do you need? So an example is we worked with Northfield, and um, they wanted to do a street tree inventory of their kind of big downtown corridor. But they actually they're also really interested in, in um, back roads ash. They don't know they had no idea how many ash they had along the back roads. So what we just designed the time the field time that we were going to be in Northfield was. We said we're going to spend this much time on doing the street trees and we'll get as much done as possible but we're also going to do a sample of 10 miles of back roads and we'll walk walk that and and we'll just count ash in the right of way so um really kind of trying to just adapt it to make it the most useful for that community another example is colchester they only wanted to inventory um, trees and new subdevelopments after 19 built after 1990 so it was it was a much it was a more condensed but it was more spread out it wasn't like focusing on any one specific area but the whole the whole just being flexible. Any other questions for this? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.